Good day, everyone. It's uh, morning, late morning where I'm at. I'm not sure what time it is where you're at, but again, as last week, I appreciate so much you allowing me into your home, that precious place. I want to talk to you a little bit today about the uh, fear of protecting our kids. Something that I worried about when I was a young father always was whether or not I was doing everything that I could to help my kids, and I would fret and worry about things that I know the Lord didn't want me to worry about. Uh, today I want to talk to you about a man named Jairus. So if you have your Bibles, so if you could turn to Luke 8, uh, 40 through 56, I'd, I'd like to make a few points and hopefully give you fathers and mothers uh, more confidence in your parenting and realizing sometimes we can be very overprotective of our kids. But what we need to do is not worry about protecting our children, that the Lord will help us to do that. And those are the type of things that I want to talk to you about today. I, I remember since Graham was my first uh, uh, going to the hospital and for the first time holding her and thinking about how fragile that little one was. And all at once, uh, what was emphasized on me uh, by the good Lord, I believe, was uh, uh, what a role that I had to play in her life and uh, what a precious thing it was to hold that little little girl in my hands the first time. And I remember thinking to myself, Lord, what am I going to do with this? You're going to have to help me with this. I know all of us want so much to, to be the parents that the Lord wants us to be. Uh, being in charge of a, another human being is tough. Uh, will we have enough money? Uh, can I get her through college? Uh, uh, the answers to this and answers to that. How am I going to afford all these diapers? Uh, how much drawer space am I going to need? What about education? You know, uh, what about vaccinations? And am I going to be able to keep up with all that? I want her to have the best now. I, you know, and and we just keep fretting, and fretting, and fretting. No parent can sit still while their children suffers. And I want to tell you, Jairus was like that. Uh, this will be kind of a, a two-part thing, but uh, the other part, uh, as we look at the other uh, person involved in this story, um, we'll emphasize some different things. But I'd like to read to you what the Bible has to say. On the other side of the lake, the crowds welcomed Jesus because they had been waiting for him. Then a man named Jairus, a leader of the local synagogue, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come home with him because his only daughter who was about 12 years old, was dying. And we'll skip down now to verse 49, and later on we'll come back to this other next week. While he was still speaking to her, a messenger arrived from the home of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue, and he told him, Your daughter is dead. There's no use in troubling the teacher now. But when Jesus heard what had happened, he said to Jairus, Don't be afraid. Just have faith in your daughter will be healed. When they arrived at the house, Jesus wouldn't let anyone go in with him except Peter, James, and John, and the little girl's father and mother. The house was filled with people who were weeping and wailing, but he said, stop the weeping. She isn't dead. She's only asleep. But the crowd just laughed at him because they all knew that she had just died. Then Jesus took her by the hand and he said with a loud voice, My child, get up. And at that moment her life returned and she immediately stood up. And then Jesus told, told them to give her something to eat and her parents were overwhelmed. But Jesus insisted that they not tell anyone. What a wonderful story that we see here. And I want us to think about some of the things that, that, that I, I can emphasize from this scripture today. We pour out our hearts, and we want so much for our children to have what they need. And in a time like this, we're all worried about, you know, maybe we've set aside a little money and, and, and we've lost some of it. Uh, uh, maybe we're kinda, you're kind of a little worried about how this is going to affect uh, you in the long haul with your children financially. Well, why don't we think about how it's going to affect us spiritually and how it's going to make us grow from this. One thing, parents, that we can do is that we can pray. We can pray. And we need to pray in a way that we have never prayed before. The prophet said in Lamentations 2 and verse 19, Arise, cry out in the night. At the beginning of the watches, pour out your heart like water before the face of the Lord. 
Wow, prayer is everything. And it's up to us to pray. And Christ responds to our prayer. Now think about how wonderful it is to have that relationship with Him. That We know that when we speak to Him, that it's just an intimate thing. It's just between us and Him. And, and uh, we can't protect our children from every threat in life, folks, but we can take them to the source of life, that being Jesus Christ. I'll never forget uh, the night that we, uh, the night after we brought Corinne home, and again I used her because she was my first. And I remember Annette was so tired, and I wanted so much for her to to go to bed and and just rest. And uh, so I took Corinne in my arms, and I went into the den of that little two bedroom house that Annette and I lived in, and I raised her up to God. And again, I said, God, I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but I know you're going to help me with this. Now, right now, I want to give this child back to you because you've given her to me. I can't save her so. I can't raise her, but you can. I want to share with you the confidence that I have in you, God, and will you just help me with this? That happened 41 years ago. Sorry, Corinne, for telling your age. But what a special relationship that I have with God because of my child. And all the doubts that I had within myself of whether I could be a good enough father, a good enough husband, uh, a good enough person of God, I just kind of let those things go. Parents, I want to encourage you today to let those things go, uh, to let God have them. The first and foremost thing that you can do for your child is to make sure that they have that spiritual relationship with the Lord that they need to have. The focus is not on going to every ball game. The focus is not on things like that. The focus is really not totally on education. I mean, your kids are going to do the best they can in whatever if you raise them to be a Christian. The confidence comes through Christ. I want to uh, impress on you today that... Jairus had faith in God, and as a result, he saw who God really was. Look at what Jesus did when he came into that home for them. He made sure that everyone else was set aside. The important people to go in with him was those that were around him, those that were going to continue to carry on the gospel. Peter, James, and John, he took them in with him. And who else did he take in? He took the mama and the dad. That mother wasn't even mentioned to this point. He took the mother in with him, and he wanted her to witness that. And everybody else is hollering and screaming, Oh, she's dead, she's dead, and they laughed at Jesus because of what he said. But Jesus raised her from the dead. And friends, we can't solve all the problems for us because some of us may lose our children before it's time. Some of our children may suffer. But let's make sure that our homes are places where we make sure that that the most important thing in their life is Jesus Christ. The most important thing is to do what Abraham did. He was willing to give that son that he waited so long to God, and he said, God, you just handle it. You want to have some faith? You want to have some hope and trust in God? Let him have those things because he is going to see us through all of these things that we're going through right now. He's going to see us through the future. He's going to do everything that he's promised us. Let's, let's have confidence in that, friends. Let's make sure uh, that we give our children back to God on a regular basis. Well, Harold, what are you talking about, give your children back to God? Think about this. Say in a prayer, God, you can have my child. I want you to mold her and make her. I want you to mold my son and make him after your will. While I am, as we sing, waited, yielded, and still. Why don't we think about that and then maybe we can have more confidence and, and assurance in, as we go out of our way and trying to protect our family, which is, that's exactly what we need to do. At the end of the night is to be able to lay down and pray to God and, and let all those things go and have confidence that he's going to do everything that he's promised us. That's what Jairus did. Jesus just came and, and spoke at the moment and answered all 
his hesitations and his prayers, and Jesus will do the same thing for us. Brethren, I love you, and uh, I hope that we will continue to get closer to God, and uh, I hope that you're continuing those devotionals in your house, and uh, hopefully when we get through all this and when we come back, as I said last time that I spoke to you, we come back here, we'll have the greatest worship service that we've ever had because we're so thankful that we're back together, praising God. But you keep on working in that home. And make sure your home is, is a place of prayer and uh, make sure your home is a place of happiness. God bless each one of you. Thank you so much, Harold, for your powerful words. And I encourage all of you to take those words so seriously. Family, we miss you so much. I know we're saying that a lot, but it's not because we're just saying it. We're saying it because we really mean it. We miss you and we miss our time together. And all of this that we're doing is just an attempt to hold us over until that time. I, I want to thank you personally for your patience during this time as we figure out what we're doing and how to do it. But I hope we don't have to do it much longer. But if we do, we'll just continue to get a little better each week. Family, if you know someone who is in need, uh, let us know and we'll see if we can help find those resources. Or if you are in need, let us know and we'll see if we can help you find the resources that you need also. And if you have no need and you're still healthy, just continue to be a part of the solution right now. Now let's hang in there and stay strong. You can do this. I believe in you and I'll see you soon. Let's close out with a prayer. Our Father in heaven, we are so grateful for every blessing you give us from the simple things to the very large things father to the encouragement that we need to our families and all the many blessings that you bless us with father help us to trust you in those things and to recognize that you are what's most important that no matter what else is going on, help us to focus on you in spiritual matters. Father, be with our families right now. Protect them. Encourage them. Be with those who are going through a really difficult time now. And Father, help us to all be smart and to stay safe and to stay healthy. Father, encourage us until we can meet again. We look forward to that day. And Father, we're so thankful for your Son. We know that without Him, Nothing is possible, but with Him, everything is. And I thank you so much for all the many blessings that come through Him. Father, forgive us of our sins. Help us to encourage one another during this time. And Father, it's in your Son's name we pray. Amen. Family, hang in there, and I look forward to hearing from you soon.